who's hungry? Well, stay tuned, because today we're going to be talking about food. Like pizza and hot dogs and cookies and cake. Hold on a minute, champ. You didn't let me finish. We're going to be talking about food that astronauts eat in space. You know, space food. We'll find out what types of food they eat, how they eat in a microgravity environment. More on that later. And if the food is as good as or better than what we eat here on Earth. And while we're talking about what goes into an astronaut's body, we have to talk about how food comes out. You mean poop and pee in space? That's right. Just like us, astronauts have to go. Now, they prefer to call it excreting bodily wastes, but I think you have the idea. So hang on tight as we prepare for takeoff and talk about food in space. Oh, you, you caught me, I was gonna have a snack here. You know, food is an important part of our daily lives. Food and water fuels our body the same way that gas fuels our cars. We need it to survive. Of course, everyone has their favorite foods. Like pizza and hot dogs and cookies and cake! Yeah, I think you mentioned those a little earlier. Now, even astronauts have foods that they like to eat. Now, in the early days of the space program, the food wasn't too tasty. Most of the food eaten by early astronauts came inside an aluminum squeeze tube, kind of like a toothpaste tube. Why? Well, there are a lot of different reasons, but one of the most important is the microgravity environment in space. Microgravity, you mentioned that before. What does that mean? I did, and you know what? Microgravity simply means little or no gravity. Now in space, the astronauts and just about everything else appears to float because of the microgravity environment. What? I know, let me give you an example. Let's say you're going to eat a cookie. You mentioned that earlier, right? Kind of like this one. So you take a bite. Oh, I and mean it crumbles a little, or a lot. What happens to those crumbles? They fall to the ground and make a mess. Right, it's pretty normal here on Earth. But in space, different story. If an astronaut eats something with crumbs, they would continue to float around inside the aircraft for the entire mission. So, NASA scientists decided on a couple of different solutions. The first one is to make small, bite-sized food, no crumbs. Just throw the whole thing in your mouth. They also decided to use aluminum squeeze tubes to make sure that loose food, like those cookie crumbs, didn't get into the space environment. By simply squeezing the food into their mouths, loose food particles wouldn't float around the cabin. This helped keep the cabin really clean, but it still didn't help with the taste. Unfortunately, most astronauts didn't really like how the food tasted. So, scientists kept trying to develop better tasting food. Now, by the time the space shuttle started flying, the food tasted much different from earlier missions. Plus, it could be stored for longer periods of time. You know, food storage has always been a problem for travelers. In a second, we'll find out more about the foods that astronauts are now eating. But first, let's take a little trip back to the time of Napoleon Bonaparte. You know him, right? Oh, the little guy with his hand in his shirt? Oh yeah, uh, that's him. Now, during his reign as Emperor of France, Napoleon was known as a great warrior. His armies fought and defeated many of the world's best armies in a very short period of time. But one serious problem Napoleon had was providing food for his soldiers. Once, Napoleon famously stated that, quote, an army travels on its stomach. Does that mean that Napoleon's army crawled on their stomachs? No, good try though. <laughs> 
That means that his army was only effective if all his soldiers were well fed. You know, food in the belly. Napoleon's armies just couldn't run out to a fast food place like we can today if they were hungry. His troops had to forage for their food. Forage means that they had to find food wherever they could. Napoleon knew that he could have a much better army if they could preserve food and bring it with them. So, he offered a prize to the first person who could invent a method to successfully preserve food. This prize was for 12,000 francs, which in those days was... Lots of money? It sure was. Now, after years of trying, a Parisian named Nicolas Appert came up with this great idea that worked. A pear successfully preserved food by, get this, partially cooking it, sealing it in a glass bottle with a cork, and then immersing the bottle in boiling water. Really? This process allowed the remaining air to be expelled through the boiling process, keeping the food fresh. A pear's preservation technique proved so successful that he was awarded the 12,000 franc prize by Napoleon himself in 1810. Good for you, Pair. Now since then, food preservation has been pretty reliable. You take a lunchbox to school, your food is preserved. Now we've got canned foods, freeze-dried foods, and many of the meals that astronauts eat can stay fresh years after they're packaged, years. Wow, but how does it taste? Actually, pretty good. Here are some of the things that astronauts are now eating when they go into space. Check this out. Shrimp cocktail, brownies, tortillas, cinnamon rolls, chocolate, tea, macaroni and cheese, and so much more. Check it out. Yes, I'd like an order of chicken and broccoli. Caught me. All this talk about food is making me so hungry. Okay, back to space food. All those foods that we just saw and talked about are pretty similar to what we eat here on Earth. So, I bet you have some questions. Hello? Yeah, did the astronauts cook their food in space? Oh, good question. You know, sometimes they use small convection ovens in space to warm the food, but you know, that doesn't really get the food hot enough. Most of the time, they just simply use hot water to make their food hot, and of course, to rehydrate it. Rehydrate who? Rehydrate. I know. Let's drop the prefix re and go from there. Now, if something is hydrated, it has water in it. For example, when you're thirsty, you drink water and become hydrated. Got it? Now, many of the meals served in space are dehydrated. This means most of the water has been taken out. Kind of uh, like how you are when you're thirsty. You're dehydrated because you don't have enough water in you. Same goes for space food. Dehydration is done to help preserve food so that it can be eaten a long time after it is packaged. Okay, rehydrate. Let's put the re back on. Now, when astronauts are ready to eat space food, they have to add water that was taken out or... Rehydrate it. When an astronaut is ready to eat, he or she uses a piece of equipment called a, you guessed it, rehydrator to heat up the food. The rehydrator measures the correct amount of water needed to be added to each food or drink package, and it allows the crew members to choose either hot or chilled water. Once the water is added to the food, it can be eaten in a matter of minutes. Kind of going through how you eat in space. This is our most favorite dish, shrimp cocktail. We add uh, three ounces of cold water from the galley, and you can see the little rotary dial where you select the uh, amount of water. And you see two switches there. The yellow is the hot and the blue is the cold. Then you kind of squish uh, the water into the shrimps and wait about 10 minutes for the shrimp to totally rehydrate and uh, it actually comes together and forms a nice sauce. 
Now on Earth, you might eat with a knife, spoon, and spork. And sporks in space, scissors and a spoon is all you need. And we use the scissors to open up the food tray. And uh, one of the features of all of our food is it has a lot of heavy sauce, which kind of holds it together. And then we just use our spoon. And uh, because of the sauce, it doesn't float away. The surface tension holds it there. It's, it's real nice. Astronauts also have to deal with other challenges when they eat. Have any ideas? Uh, I don't know. Okay, here's a hint. Remember in the beginning we talked about microgravity? Oh, how do they keep the food on the table when they eat? Ah, another good question. When astronauts are flying on the space shuttle, they don't sit at a table like we do. They use Velcro on the back of their food package and strap the food on their leg, on the wall, on the ceiling, on the floor, wherever they can use Velcro. However, on the International Space Station, astronauts do sometimes sit around a table and eat like we do on Earth. They strap the food down with Velcro and it won't float away from the plate. So, can you think of any other problems that they might have? Let me help. Do you ever put salt and pepper on your food? What about mustard or ketchup? Well, in space, if you were to shake the salt, it would just float away. The same goes with ketchup and mustard. It'd make a huge mess. So, how do you think astronauts get the salt, the pepper, the mustard, the ketchup, and any other condiments on their food? I don't know. Let me tell you. They use liquid forms of salt and pepper, and they squeeze it on the food. Other condiments, like mustard and ketchup, are squeezed on food through packages just like we see in fast food restaurants. Now, here's a food fact for you. Many astronauts say food tastes different in space than it does here on Earth. For this reason, the most requested condiment in space is hot sauce. Really? Hot sauce helps spice up the food so the taste is stronger. Okay guys, we've talked about the space food that astronauts eat and found out it's pretty similar to what we eat. But let's switch gears. Astronauts have to train for a long time before they can go into space. I have a question for you. How do you think astronauts train to eat in a microgravity environment? You can't escape gravity here on Earth, can you? Don't they train underwater? Well, you know, you're right. They do train underwater for some things because water does feel a little like a microgravity environment. But let's think about the food. It'd be pretty hard to eat underwater, don't you think? Most astronauts train for the microgravity of space in a KC-135 airplane called the Reduced Gravity Research Program, but its nickname is the Vomit Comet. Vomit? Oh yeah. <laughs> Lots of people get sick when they ride in this airplane, and they train for the effects of microgravity. Once airborne, the pilot flies the airplane in the shape of a parabola. What? A parabola. Let me show you what it looks like. Now you may have learned about this type of shape in math class. Really? Anyway, get this. The plane climbs up very steeply, and when it gets to the top of the parabola, the pilot begins to dive downward. At this point, the plane and everyone in it starts to free fall for about 30 seconds. The pilot completes the bottom of the parabola and begins to climb again, up and down, over and over. Oh, you can see how your stomach could get very upset. Oh, this maneuver, it's done numerous times, so the passengers can experience microgravity over and over. This type of training helps the astronauts get used to what it feels like in space. Now sometimes, the astronauts will eat when they're on these training flights. I don't know how they can even think about food, but it really helps them prepare for eating in a microgravity environment. Okay guys, little review. So far, we've learned some historical facts, we've talked about what astronauts eat in space, and we've learned how astronauts train in a microgravity environment. But with all this food going into an astronaut's body, how does it come out? Say you're an astronaut and you're in space and it hits you. You have to go to the bathroom. What do you do? Well, because space has little or no gravity, we definitely 
don't want anything floating around with us that should be in a toilet. You know what I mean? So what do you do? Hold it. Ha. Ha. Very funny. We don't hold it, and neither do astronauts. In fact, they have a special type of toilet to help them get rid of waste. Check this out. On the space shuttle, astronauts are actually strapped down. Then there's a suction device that's pulling their waste away from them. And then they have sanitary wipes. They tie it up in a nice little bag, and there you go. Now on the ISS, using the toilet's a little different. You still have the suction thingy and the straps, but there's also something else that you probably don't want in the bathroom with you. A camera. Yeah, a camera. <laughs> Astronauts use a camera to help them guide their waste into a special holding tank. Wow. Now there is something else. On the International Space Station, or ISS, the urine... You mean pee? Right, the urine or pee is actually recycled back into the drinking water. What? I know this might sound gross, but you know guys, it needs to be done. Let me try and explain why. When astronauts travel on the space shuttle, they either stay in orbit for a few days or a few weeks. Now, if their mission is short, they can bring up all the drinking water that they need. But on the International Space Station, the astronauts can be in orbit for at least six months. Because there's limited space, and it's very expensive to get water into space, I mean, we're talking about $10,000 a pound. Well, then they must find ways to conserve as much water as possible. One of the ways they do this is through filtering. They filter out all of the impurities in the astronaut's urine, and they make it clean enough to drink again. I know it might sound gross, but I promise you, the water is very clean. It's really good. <laughs> well, guys, it's almost a wrap. You know, we've talked a lot about food in space, but food here on Earth is very important as well. You know, like this apple I've been trying to eat this whole video? Everyone watching this program should try to eat healthy meals every single day. Now, make sure you eat a balanced diet with lots of fruits and lots of veggies, and I know it's hard, but try to stay away from really fatty foods and sweet desserts. Actually, eat in moderation. That's probably the best advice. And don't forget, you need to exercise. Oh, I have an idea. As soon as you're done watching this video, go out, get some exercise, run, play. If you eat well and you're active and you study hard, one day soon, you may be one of those astronauts eating food in space. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed your trip into space. Take care and remember to eat well and exercise. Hey, your food's here. What? My takeout's here? Finally. Yeah, you alien. All right, focus here, focus. Now, all that food that we just saw and talked about, it sounds pretty similar to what we he eat. He eat. Oh, that was a big chunk. Now, don't forget, exercise. Blech, sorry. What? <laughs> Rehydrate it? Oh no. Do aliens. Um... <laughs> food on Earth? is very important to understand as well. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought that was somebody talking to me. Sorry.